welding shield in position, then strike the arc. A correct run will look like this. Note the arc length. You should try to keep it about three millimeters long. This is what you should see from your position. To stop, backtrack over the end of the weld bead, then pull the electrode away sharply to break the arc, exaggerated here. During welding, the electrode melts at the end to form the weld. In that run, this length of the electrode was consumed to deposit this length of weld. Eye protection is essential when using the chipping hammer to remove the slag left on the weld surface. The bead should be straight and even, but you'll find a few drops of metal have stuck to the work. These are called spatter. Now, some of the things which can go wrong. At first, you may find it difficult to keep the arc going when you start. It helps to scrape the electrode on the plate instead of stabbing it. If the electrode sticks to the plate, don't panic. Keep your face protected until you've broken the circuit by lifting the plate off the bench or releasing the electrode from the holder. This won't hurt the set. A poor start will leave untidy weld metal on the work. Remember, we showed you how to end the weld run by going back over the bead before breaking the arc. You don't have to do it quite as much as that, but if you just pull the electrode away, the end of the weld won't be neat and rounded, but instead will be untidy and may contain pores or cracks. Eyes. If the current is much too low for the size of electrode you're using, it'll be extremely difficult to strike an arc and keep it going steadily. With a bit more current, but not quite enough, even if you can keep the arc going, the weld bead will be small and lumpy. Eyes. When the current is too high, it'll be easy to strike the arc and keep it going, but the weld bead will be flat and spattery. With low current, the weld bead is cold. It hasn't melted into the plate. With normal current, it is smooth and rounded. With high current, it's wide, flat and spattery. If you let the arc get too long, it will go out as well as increasing spatter and making a faulty weld. And if it gets too short, the result's obvious. Keeping the right travel speed is important. You may be going too fast. But if you go too slow, the weld metal piles up and may put the arc out. The beads clearly show the problems. Normal speed. Fast, small and stringy. Slow, large and lumpy.
Another problem beginners often have is that they find it hard to move the electrode without changing the angle. They tend to hold their arms stiffly and twist their wrist. Or let the electrode sag down towards the work. Either of these faults makes it hard to control the arc. Remember, you're aiming to put down a straight, even bead. 